Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the Whiskey Wednesday show. We are here today with um, artist, musician, um, creator of uh, oddities, um, Mr. Tim Lee, who I met in North Carolina. I believe we met at Rally, right at the IBMA. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the first time, and then um, again at um, out in um, Piscopo. Jam in the trees. Yeah, yeah, jam in the trees. That's right. Yeah. You know, um, and um yeah I, I remember i was i was at ibma and i'm walking around the streets and i i saw your booth and i think that was where i bought this shirt this was the first right. shipping years that i had um and i bought this shirt and a couple of others and then i went back to my hotel room and i i found my buddy steve johnson and i took him back to your booth and he bought a bunch of stuff yeah uh, yeah. And then he bought me one of your prints uh, as a thank you um, for the conference and stuff, just hanging out. And I put that on my studio wall and and I've been following you and sort of uh, collecting some of your stuff here and there, including this behind me here, which was the All Together Now album cover, which yeah. uh, you yeah. provided the artwork for. I was happy to do that. that was it was really amazing. Um, thing. Yeah, it was good timing. So I just finished it and the guy had a beard. So <laughs> I know, and it's sort of people say, "Oh, look, it looks like you." I'm like Tim. I didn't even have a beard when when Tim was, saw me last. You know, it's sort I of was weird. like, yeah, I was, um, you know, seeing the future. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's that's your artistic vision is being able to paint what's happening in the future. That's that's a good trait. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm making a big a lot of money from doing that. Right? Yeah, you should paint some lottery <laughs> tickets. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, it's, so, um, so Tim, you're in Atlanta, Georgia now, eh? Yeah, um, I've been down, I've been back here um, for, I guess, about, you know, a little over a year now. And um, I was in North Carolina for 20 years, I guess. And then, you know, the pandemic, and I had a, had a gallery there for a while. And then mm -hmm. that, took a, that took a beating during the that period. And um, so I ended up down here, which is where I kind of started my art career. You know, um, I was I'm, I grew up in Ohio and went to art school in Ohio and like like immediately a, you know a week after graduation packed up a Ford Escort and drove to Atlanta and started looking for jobs this was like in the in the mid 80s and um and stayed here until uh 1998 so um and now I'm back it's a lot more crowded but mm -hmm. you know some of the roads are still the same but it's cool because um I have my I'm living with my brother and he's also a fantastic artist and musician. So we have this, you know, these parallel lives that we haven't we haven't lived together since he was a freshman in high school, you know. So it's really great to get to know each other and um we're just you know, he's in there in his room making art and I'm out here making art in the uh converted garage and um you know, it's just like music, art it's it's been really great to have that bond again after being apart for a long long time you know? yeah what a great thing and, and to be able to have two brothers both creating artistically in the same place that's pretty rare too yeah yeah and, and um he does he does gig posters for for bands that's what he's been doing he and his business partner they've been doing them for like 25 years they do a ton of dave matthews stuff and jack white and they've pretty much done you know, all the, a lot of big people or indie people, I guess you could call it. But now it's, you know, they'll do occasional fish and they'll do widespread and do those kind of, those are the kind of bands that tend to Billy Strings so that, that hire artists to do their posters and they sell them as merch basically. Right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we're doing that. And um, tomorrow we're putting on this uh, a festival thankfully robert is doing most of the, the work <laughs> um but we're doing this festival called wigwag tomorrow wigwag, yeah yeah and it's an indie music indie art thing and you know a lot of the bands i don't i don't know what it's like up there but you know the indie scene here is not not great in atlanta and um and it's just kind of this is good to get those some bands out that don't you know you just don't see all the time and they're still doing it and we like that kind of stuff. We lean towards we because we both kind of like the same music. You know, um, I, I'm listening to Burrito Brothers today, and and so we come from that side of things now. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I play bluegrass 
for fun. Yeah, that's yeah. my. That's yeah, my you play show. mandolin, right? That's your main. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was. Um, uh, this neighborhood that we're in is like an older neighborhood, and in, in the last couple of months, I've met like three or four people that play music, and so you know, one guy's a head of bluegrass here in town, and um, this other guy I met down the street. I was at his house till one in the morning last night, sitting on the back porch playing <laughs> guitars and mandolins, just like doing weird covers of anywhere from Led Zeppelin to Eagles to you know just just kind of seeing you know how things mesh and just having a good time, a couple of beers and just you know working on just just goofing off. And I love that. I just love that about music and. I think that's the essence of where it all begins with music is that just kind of goofing off, having fun with friends, creating something. Yeah. I mean, and that, as you that were friendship thing is super important. And, um, I don't want to play with somebody who's got a, an ego. I'm way past that at this point. Yeah. So it's just about if I like you and we can somehow find some common ground, you know, and you you don't mind having a mandolin in the you know in the thing then it's cool I'm, I'm you know so that keeps me doing that kind of stuff keeps me sane you know i started going to a bluegrass jam here in town that's um you know one of those sit in a circle kind of things and take turns calling out tunes and um i've been to a couple of those and that's been really good for me to get back to to that and kind of find a new community come back down here and it's a huge city but there just there aren't as many people in town. I mean, it's an R R and B hip hop town, right? You know, that's right. Kind of what it's known for. And um, so I've found these little niche musicians, and everybody's like, "Oh, you play mandolin?" I'm like, "Yeah, like, okay, come to our thing." And um, and it's just like a it's therapy. You know, it's yeah, because like, I will get lost, and I, you know, I'll spend time in this art cave, and I'm working on a piece now i got I have a show coming up um june 3rd and so it's a solo first solo show for me here in town so i'm scrambling to do artwork and that's fantastic though yeah yeah so it's um i'm staying busy doing what i want to do and usually that's music themed stuff it's just that's those are the stories that i think i want to tell and um so much of your art contains music whether it's musicians or instruments or just the vibe of like David Bowie and stuff like that. Right. Um, and you, you do your art, but you're really, really tied into music. Like every time I've seen you, it's been at a music festival. Is that something that you've set out to do or is that just something that's happened naturally? It just sort of, um, it kind of happened around, you know, right around that time I met you, uh, you know, I was living in Raleigh and playing bluegrass and, and, and I was like, I was working a full time gig at the at the newspaper as an artist, and um, and someone said, "Hey, you know, why don't you do a, a painting show?" And I'm like, "What? I don't paint. I work digitally. You know, I create digitally at the newspaper." And so I had to, like, "Oh my God, I've got to come up with twelve pieces in in two months." And so it just sort of happened. And then I did a couple. You know, I, I was like, "Well, what do I know?" what do I love? And I started doing these um, pieces that were music based. And I was even, you know, at that point, like the one behind me on the big thing, I, I was, you know, naming them after bluegrass and traditional music songs and just like kind of getting in that, that story mode of, you know, with my own twist, I guess, as far mm -hmm. as and it's just kind of blossom. I keep going back to that. Well, because people dig it. And, um, and it makes me happy. It's it. very cool. And I find it interesting. Like um, you said, you went to school in the 80s uh, to university. Yeah. For, so yeah. Like, yeah, in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. So from, okay, I, I, I sort of, I guess we're close to the same age. I went to school in the 80s. Um, and that was sort of when I was uh, figuring out what I wanted to do. Yes. Your art at this point is instantly recognizable. Oh, um, thank you the 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 way that you use the medium um whether it's digital or you know one of your coffin prints or yeah, one of your other cool. prints yeah. everything sort of, it has a very similar flavor and it's very unique to you how did you come across that and and like at what point did that become your thing like this is this is who tim lee is or I think was, that, yeah i mean i know what you're saying the style and the 
and the thought process and all that kind of um, comes together after I mean, I've done this for 40 years, right? You know, I've been a professional artist. And um, I think it's just everything now that I do, it ends up looking like I did it. So it's kind of one of those things where I can't really can't really stop it. And now I have these methods of building a painting and the kind of things that I like. I like, you know, color. Well, usually I like color. This one's not. Um, but, you know, I like lots of high contrast stuff and, and my and the style of drawing is kind of just inherent as to who I've become after drawing and sketching so much. And it's like, oh, well, it just comes out this is my thing. And people say, well, I can tell it's a Tim Lee. And I'm like, well, I don't really have a choice. <laughs> you know, I, I could fake it. I used to fake it a lot when I was at the newspaper because I had to be, you know, they had one illustrator on staff and they said, well, we want you to do these things, but it's got to look like a different person did it every time. So I became this, this mimic. And then, so when that whole thing ended with the demise of, print and newspapers I just kind of went back to my well and and just and and then really developed where where you see I'm at now and and I'm you know I I try to like break the mold and um do some different things with color and stuff like that but it ends up being Tim you know people are like oh it's so dark I'm like it's not creepy dark it's it's a it's a whimsical creepy kind of vibe you know our magical fantastical kind of stuff so mm -hmm. yeah so the style just came from like doing a ton of work I mean I've got my 10,000 hours yeah that's not that's been happening that happened a long time ago and I um when I was young and like in the in the 90s i was a full-time freelance illustrator and so i had that i did the whole magazine deal i worked for magazines and publishers on my own and had agents and had an agent in new york and san francisco and and then you had to the whole thing was to sell a look you know you had you had to be an individual so i had to decide okay what because i'm was versatile enough what do i like what do I want Tim Lee to look like? And then you kind of had to stick to it, right? So you would get yeah. hired. And then, um, so I did that. And this is all just an offshoot of that. It's like, uh, you know, me on steroids and not have to draw dudes in suits with briefcases and laptops. Cause that's what the jobs were, you know, exactly uh, kind of stuff. And, um, but it was great training ground, just doing, you know, a ton of it. And, um, so now I'm doing, I just kind of do whatever I want. Isn't um, that fantastic? Which is kind of scary, but, you know. <laughs> well, it's, it's weird because I, I've been I've been saying that, you know, even though I kind of retired out of pro music and over a decade ago, and I've been kind of working just strictly independently, I find that I'm living the dream. I'm using that phrase more and more. Um, I don't work for anybody. I don't have my name on any contracts anymore. I create what I want, when I want, how I want. And it sort of has the same, you know, it, it, it has a moderately same uh, uh, result as when I was doing stuff I didn't want to do, you know, um, right, except right. that I'm actually wanting to do it. Well, I believe that is a great distinction because when you're doing something, when I'm doing something for somebody else, like it's a commission or an assignment, and I don't do that very often anymore just because I don't want to, I just don't want to because I know what's going to happen. They get about, Honestly, they probably get maybe 75% of my ability because of the the constrictions of, you know, what it's got to look like. And this, and I put myself in this pigeonhole and it's got to look like this. I mean, with music, it's got to sound like this. Mm -hmm. But for me, and so when I do stuff for myself, it's always been that way. That um, It's my best work because there's there's nobody i'm not worrying about this guy on my shoulder saying can you make his head bigger or can you change the color or whatever and, and then i kind of freeze up right you know i start drawing and to to what they want instead of to what i want and so yeah. kind of go it's exactly what you're talking about you know it's freeing to do that and you will do your best work um i do anyhow yeah yeah, yeah i think something. you're right 
And I think that at this point in my life, I don't know about you, but like the idea of having a job and making a regular income is sort of doesn't seem to be as much the goal as what it used to be. No. <laughs> I'm unhirable, man. I'm like sick. I'm 63 years old now. I'm in my art prime, but nobody hires illustrators. There's, you know, so it's kind of like, well, I'm doing this because I don't have a choice, but I'm also doing it because this is the choice I always wanted, right? I, I always wanted to do this. And I'm I'm really glad not to be in that grind, you know. Sure, you know, the money is it was nice having that steady gig, but um, you know, it's like, well, this is like the you know, the end portion of my career and so why not try and enjoy the little things you know i got my dog laying over here sleeping with me and you know i played music till one in the morning and i get up and kind of just like okay what are you doing today well you're gonna go paint on this thing that you want to do and yes it's such a relief and you know we all went through you know a lot of stuff the last few years and um and you know my life has been topsy-turvy and you know it's ended up here I am, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing the show, this the show that um, I'm putting on at this gallery here in town. It's called, and it's called. I titled it "Return to Coda," which is like go back to the beginning, yep. you know, and play through that, and because this is where it all started for me, and so that's you know, it's really nice. It's really nice to do that kind of to be appreciative of all the stuff you've done. Yeah, for me, it's been about addressing my relationship with money which is terrible you know i've been, a broke, <laughs> I've been yeah. a broke musician my whole life uh, yeah well i'm right there you know it's like I, I always joke i'm like okay well i'm you know 60 single self-employed and i'm also for my career path of money making i chose um art and the lowest paying music type form ever bluegrass <laughs> it's like it's like the perfect storm of of uh, not money, but you know, just really, yeah. It's I'm what am I? You know, what am I going to do? I have to laugh at it. It's pretty. It's what I like. You know, um, it's, it's so, about finding the happiness and being able to still eat. You know, uh, and I, yeah. I think that 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 if you do what's really making you happy, the food will show up somehow. I had, before we had the internet cut out, I had asked you what your favorite instrument uh, to be inspired by is when you're painting or creating. Yeah, um, definitely an like an old beater acoustic guitar, um, maybe pre-war Martin, uh, <laughs> um, but something that's something that's like old and has some some grit to it. It's got some wear and tear, and it's, you know it's been played and it's been everywhere in stories. So, and I, I tend to gravitate to things that have a lot of texture and are kind of vintage, I guess, and that's probably nostalgia on my own part, you know, of wanting to, you know, th you know, thinking about those things. And um, so that's probably my favorite instrument to paint. Although I, I am painting an electric guitar behind me for this dead hippie guy that I'm doing. And uh, <laughs> and you, you do a lot of basses, a lot of electric and upright basses. Same thing. It's, you know, it's that there's something about the uh, wood. I like to paint yeah. things that have that wood and that old vibe to them. I mean, you know, I think the one in that one is modeled after like a, you know, a, a K base. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and that's just all because of, you know, what I, the, you know, the bluegrass thing and everybody revered all those instru those old instruments and, you know, cause they have great tone. And so, you know, I like doing things that look, worn out and from the dark dirty you know back in some woods or whatever it's but it's probably nostalgia you know i don't I'm rude yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got your wigwag festival coming up on may 13th right yeah um that's gonna that, be that's, that's tomorrow. tomorrow morning yeah i'm gonna be getting up early and um hauling my stuff over there popping up a tent and um just kind of hanging out sell some prints and little things and then um listen to some music all day it's, it sounds like a great a it's great pretty day. awesome man I mean, yeah and i have yeah, you know, really cool. good seats because we're right by the band so exactly <laughs> um, so that'll be fun and it's really i'm mean, uh, coming down here you know it's a big city right and i lived yeah. in my last town i lived in was 4600 people so 
I thought I would get lost, but I have, you know, found a community of artists and, and musicians and kind of those, those fringe people. And, um, and a lot of that's because of my brother who's always been involved in the music scene here. And so I, it's like, it's a great thing. I'll meet all these new weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have a great time. And then, um, so that's, that'll be done. And then I'll have a couple of weeks to finish a few paintings and then I'll go do a, sh do my show. And, um, and what, what are the dates of your show and where is it? It's going to open up on June 3rd in um, a neighborhood in town called Kirkwood. And it's kind of a, an in town old neighborhood. And it's, there's a, this gallery's, um, in a gas station, an old gas station, and these tattoo these two women are tattooers, and it's a women led business, and um, it'll be there at the Empire Arts Gallery here here in Atlanta. So um, I'm I'm excited about it. there's cool people. It's my kind of vibe, you know. I always do well with musicians and tattoo people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that. I mean, I, I being a musician with tattoos, walking down the street, your booth jumped out at me. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just like that, you know, in a sea of uh, lighthouses, you know, there's some guy painting creepy musicians. You know, yeah, no, it's uh, your your art is inspiring to me. It has been since the first moment I laid on eyes on it. And I'm so glad that we've had a chance to foster a relationship and, and yeah. have you uh, contribute to the album. Thank you again for that so much yeah, um, I know it's, with the artwork. And um, you're, just, you're so always you, one of those people. Do you find as an artist, one thing I was curious about, do you find like from a sales perspective, do you sell more of the pop art stuff as in like the t-shirts and, um, and the sort of more commercial stuff than sort of full paintings or is it a, is it a different audience depending where you are? Yeah. I mean, those $20 items are always easier to, to move because you know, people just don't, they want the painting, right? They would, they would love to own a thousand dollar painting, but just can't do it. And I can't, really afford to give them away or i just of so um so the t-shirts are fun and that's a fun kind of you know different kind of design work different kind of skill set that you would i would use to do a design of a shirt or something and um so so those and i sell prints of my paintings a lot and then um you know i don't have a lot of originals hanging around so because they sell but it just takes a long time for them to sell uh, yeah, well, it's good that they do though yeah yeah i'm like one of people are like well can you just bring some stuff i'm like i don't have any stuff <laughs> it's all either gone or and sometimes they're stuck in galleries for a long period of time you might have, right. you might do paintings they'll sit for a year because of the contract or whatever but yeah it's this this kind of graphic design things um and t-shirts and and lately i've been doing some silk screen printing which is, you know, they're all additioned, mm -hmm. but, the, but the price point is great for, for people, you know, to yeah. just say, I have a Tim Lee and his signatures on there and they didn't have to, you know, break the bank to do it because, you know, everything's like we said, it all costs more. So you have to cover all those bases as an artist. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, I haven't done a lot of shirts in the last year or so since I moved down here, I'm sure I'll, jump back in that game i've got a couple of them you know a couple of designs that are i'll sell this weekend but um yeah. and they're music based of course <laughs> of course <laughs> but, yeah but um yeah it's fun doing that kind of breaking it up because it is a different skill set you know it's a different way to think about doing a piece of art and um you know believe it or not think about that all the, all the time it's like and yeah and i'm still trying to get better you know, you're trying yeah. to get, you know, I think that I always say, well, you know, as you get older, unless you're physically, unless your physical skills deteriorate, you should be getting better on the guitar or as an artist, you know, and, and granted, yeah, your, you know, eyesight or hand dexterity or whatever is going to go slowly, but your brain has accumulated so much wealth and knowledge that you should keep getting better. Yeah. Know? Yeah, so um, I agree. I'm, still, I'm doing my best work ever, and that makes me that makes me happy. Yeah, the, 
I'm still getting better. I'm still challenged by the stupid painting behind me saying, how am I going to, you know, what am I doing here? Cause it's like a puzzle every time. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so that makes me, that keeps me going and maybe that'll keep me young. You know, is it that constant feeding of the brain of challenging your brain to do that kind of, to, to puzzle out things? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, the coffin boards are these. Um, I, I know that when I first sort of d found you, uh, you had smaller versions of stuff like that. But the larger coffin boards, like the one behind you, is this? An, is this seems like a fairly new thing for you? Um, yeah, I, I, I did a few of them. They were this is like three feet tall, and then um, I did a few that were five feet tall, and then I sort of stopped doing them for a while. I did like a resonator guitar guy and another, you know, kind of a um pre-prohibition old kind of almost new orleans southern gothic kind of vibe to them and i stopped doing them and then this year i did i've done a couple more and it's like oh people love these and i yeah. like doing them i make the you know i buy the i buy wood and i you know cut you know glue the boards together and clamp them and then and then cut it out and do the whole thing so i'm making it i'm not just buying a, a pre-made shape I'm, I'm like i actually enjoy using some power tools and you know putting grooves in them so yeah the coffins are great i just i, I i'm the coffin guy apparently <laughs> <laughs> which is really weird you know it's like oh yeah and, and, uh, and it's just one of those things in there and i you know it's coffins and music i did a robert johnson thing you know last I don't know when it was last fall. And what I do is, is to, you know, I, some guy in Florida bought that and, but I have them professionally scanned now so that I can, you know, sell prints that I make. I, mm -hmm. I make, my, I do all my own prints and I can, can sell those to people and they can have collect, you know, all that kind of stuff at a more reasonable price. Yeah. You know? I went to college my freshman year and it was fine. You know, it was a grind. It was really hard, but I did well. And then I decided to take the next year off, which wasn't really happy. My parents weren't happy about it. Mm -hmm. but, and I, I wanted to race motocross. <laughs> like, you know, just like fulfilling some stupid childhood dream. And I was terrible at it. I was terrible at it, but I just loved it. And so I worked at Whirlpool building washers and dryers for like a year. And I became friends with these guys on the line and they're in their, they were in their thirties at the time. And I was like 19, 20 years old. And they were like, Tim, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, you can draw, you can do this, go back to college. And they, they kind of, they forced me to kind of go back and, and that's me the art thing, you know, and I'm, I'm really appreciative of those, of those guys. You know, they're like, you have a way to, you got it's a skill. I, I hate to call it talent because I mean, there's something there, but you got to learn how to do it, right? Yeah. You know, you got to practice and do it. So I'm, yeah. So I know, I knew what that life was like. And and now those factories are gone. So I couldn't even work there. <laughs> so I don't know what I would do. You know, I could yeah. be a lot more breeder, but they got rid of those too. Um, yeah. I think that, I mean, it's a great luxury. Well, I'm not, you know, whether you're, have all the money you want that doesn't really matter i, I just like painting I'll, I'll never retire yeah I'm, i never will because i'm always going to paint maybe i'll just paint pictures that are don't require my vision to be as good um you know bigger strokes or whatever but yeah just it's like and i tell people two things you know alleviate stress for me and one is when i'm in the middle of a painting I'm not thinking about anything else. The music's going on in the background always, but I'm I'm in that my in that world. And then when I'm playing, you know, I'm playing bluegrass or playing some song for you know for that time, it just takes away all the stuff in my that you have to worry about in life. Yeah. You know? And so it's like I'm super grateful to have to have 
both of those things you know they take my head out of worrying about what's going to happen with ai is it going to take over the world or is it going to eliminate all the songwriters and and movie scripts and uh you know the artist thing i don't really care about it because i'm too old anyhow i'm just like <laughs> i'm i'm sort of the same too i'm too old to really care about it but i do find it interesting um I do too. paint with traditional oils and <laughs> hang on to the Hang on to those old, those things that, you know, you get dirty doing, sweaty. And yep. that, that's what drives me. Yeah, you know, I don't do as much digital art anymore because I just, I mean, I just kind of got bored with it, sitting in front of my computer for that long, doing a painting. And, and that it'll still take just as long, but I wasn't getting dirty. And so now, I'm, you know, back to paint brushes and oil paint and um, really enjoying ruining all my pants and t-shirts with paint on them <laughs> but isn't that the part of being an artist i mean that's the the tactile experience yes know? yeah exactly because when you're just working on a, a a tablet with an electronic pen which is i mean they're wonderful for something yep. and it got me where i am and i learned a lot because i didn't really matter i could just hit control z and do that line again over and over until I got it right where I wanted. But um, that tactile thing is is what makes me want to be still be an artist. And I know that it's not. I mean, I could do a lot more detailed stuff doing it digitally. But am I getting that out of it? You know, uh, some I'm not getting this visceral kind of touching the wood, paint, getting you know out of it. So it just became. Um, I'll do it when I do a commercial job. I'll do them digitally just because I don't want to have to um, deal with making changes to an original painting, which is. Well, that's just it. You get somebody comes back and they say they don't like the shade of a certain color you use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So digital is great for that. And, um, you know, for doing like t shirts and stuff, all the all that is it's wonderful. And, um, but I just, I'm not ready to do it all the time you know i'm just I, well i did it all the time for years and now I don't you've earned it. the right you've earned the right through uh through time and, and hard work to be able to choose what you want to do yeah yeah it's like okay i'm gonna learn how to paint in oils you know at age 50 something because i had not used them since art school um, mm -hmm. you know and I, because they were just too messy and too too long to dry and i was like well i'm just gonna now i'm gonna do this and get back to that smell yeah exactly <laughs> i do love that smell you know it's it's a wonderful thing and um yeah i'm I'm pretty happy i painted this let me show you this this is a uh this is whiskey wednesday this is a uh guitar I, I got these little mini it's a real good it's not a uke it's a, like a child's guitar and they're really the bridges wow. were so terrible and they're unplayable and um i painted this and it's got like it's all it's you know moonshine but it's got, got like these whiskey titles going around here whiskey before breakfast you know whiskey oh very before, cool Tennessee whiskey so i'm like you know painting on different stuff having a good time still being tim lee that's amazing yeah it's, it's um you know i like painting on found objects every once in a while it's fun for me then it's whiskey wednesday it I'm is not, whiskey wednesday i'm not drinking whiskey because it's too early in the day here it's, it's, friday, yeah, it's actually but... still it's actually friday morning i know i'm on the juice <laughs> too. yeah I hey. probably uh i should probably let you go and i gotta go get allison some lunch yeah i gotta i need to eat something and um you know tell people to find tim lee rabbit dash rabbit run on the internet and then uh, or instagram is a great way to yeah i'll put up your website and your instagram and all that and i'll edit this video with a bunch of photos there's lots of lots of great work to put behind what you're talking about yeah. Um, really Take appreciate anything. you taking the time to come on the show and being a part of you know you know having a, the cover of one, of one of the records that i did is is it's a huge thing for me you know and to have your work on the cover is amazing well that said it made me feel good to do that you know i got i got a lot out of that just like okay you know you did a good thing you know and, and that's important to me you know and the whole and, project you know, was 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 all about doing a good thing yeah and you're you're just one of those people that you know um you talked to me when i was going through some real serious shit two years ago i was like i don't really know ken that well but you were just so gracious and easy to talk to and i super appreciate that because 
is not that easy to find. <laughs> you know, you're um, you're right. Yeah. Um, you're right. And there are certain people as we wander through this world, and we pass thousands of people every day. Every now and again, somebody comes into your peripheral, and it's like that person's going to be in my life. And I mean, that was yeah. how I felt after I met you that day. Yeah, it was weird. We're both those. I mean, you you can kind of sense that when you meet someone like that, and hopefully, it is a long term thing and not just you know five years or ten years, but some friendships are just meant to be that long, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Good people. Good people is a wonderful thing. It sure is. It yeah. sure is. All right, man. You uh, have a great weekend. You as well. Have a really good time tomorrow with the Wigwag Festival yeah. and I'll, I'll dig around and I'll find some information for your gallery show and I'll put that up as well. And we'll have you yeah. on the show on Wednesday night. Yeah, man. That's, it's going to be great. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. Okay, I brother. You take my care. Mug out there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Take it easy. Have a really Good great luck. weekend, my friend. I hope it doesn't rain. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay, Bye cheers. Now.